Have any shoes with your belt? Want to know how to change them and get the correct tension? Then stick around because that's what we're doing in this episode. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of James Dean Designs. If you're new to the channel and love CNC, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get all the latest videos. Now in today's episode we're taking a look at the belt on the Fox Alien 4040 XC, but the topics that we're going to be covering are relevant to a lot of belt driven machines, so don't think it is model specific. Now the two things we're focusing on today is how to change those belts and set the correct tension on them. But before we do so, it's a good idea to understand why this is necessary. Any belt driven machine those belts will start to lose tension over time. What that ultimately results in is steps being missed, axes coming out of alignment and probably a failed job at the end of the day which is something we always need to avoid. So what we need to do is keep an eye on those belts, make sure the tension is correct to ensure the machine is running as smooth as possible. Now when my Fox Alien machine arrived and I assembled it all of the tensioners had been used to the maximum capacity. The tension was okay on them at the time but I didn't really think much of it. However, what I realized is that because all the capacity had been used, when they started to lose tension, I'd have no way to adjust them. So what we're going to do is take the belts off completely, reinstall them fresh, set the correct tension. So let's move over to the machine now and start to take a look at doing that. So as we're looking at the Y axis, we'll need to release the tension brackets on all four corners to get the belts free. We'll start by releasing the clamping down bracket bolt. We'll then release the tension bolt and finally we'll release the clamp itself to allow the ribbon to come free. So we can see that now we've released the tension, this becomes quite loose and we'll release the clamping plate now in order to take the belt out itself. I've fixed the clamping plate back down to make sure we don't lose any of the bolts or parts. The belt is now free and we'll continue to do this on all the other corners and then we can start to remove it out of the carriage itself. So with both ends of the belt free we can pull it out through the carriage and release it completely. Now quick top tip, before you pull the belt out attach a piece of string to one end or a ribbon, something along those lines. It needs to be fairly thin so it can go through this system but it will just make it much easier to feed the new belt back through. This is one of the most difficult parts so doing something as simple as this will make your life much easier. Now you can just pull it out with a bit of effort or you can apply some friction and use the knob on the stepper motor to pull it through as well. Obviously this will only take it halfway but it just makes life easier in it getting it out. As you can see there the knot comes around the loop and it keeps going and then we can just pull it out the other side. And there we have it. So when we come to feed the new belt back through, we've got something in place to pull it all the way back through from the other end. And as I say, just make life much easier. So as mentioned earlier, for the purpose of this tutorial, I am simply refitting the existing belts back in place, but I wanted to show the process of how to remove them and then refit them through the carriage system. Now, if you are ordering new belts, you need to order lengths of around 65 centimeters, so approximately 26 inches. That is a fraction more than you actually need, but it's better to have too much per length than too little. Alternatively, you can order a very long length and just cut it down to size as suited when you feed it through. So when feeding the belt back through you want to make sure that the teeth are facing down into the extrusion and the flat piece is on top. This just ensures it's the right way when going through the carriage mechanism in order to grip the teeth on the stepper motor. Now in order to get the belt back through the system of wheels here we're going to do the opposite of what we just did. We're going to pull on the string gently and feed it through taking it slow and easy. We'll also use the knob on the side of the stepper motor to give us a bit of friction in order to pull it through as well. Now there will be tight spots during this process so take it slow and it will come through eventually. Don't put too much pressure because what you want to avoid is actually pulling your piece of string off the belt itself because that will just make it slightly difficult to then refeed it all the way through. So I'm pulling this round, we can just see that the belt is tucked underneath here. So I'm just going to straighten it back out, feed it back through that bottom bearing and now it's also gripping on the teeth of the motor so we can apply a gentle bit of pressure and just pull it through and it should come back out the other end. Now it is sticking slightly on this last wheel so I'm just going to apply a little bit more pressure bit of wiggling and there we are it's come back through. 
Now, I was very gentle there. I didn't want to pull on this too much because as I say, the last thing you want is to lose the string off that piece of belt. If for any reason the string becomes detached from the belt itself as you're trying to work through it, or maybe you took the belt out and didn't attach a piece of string to begin with, there are a couple of options we can try to help get it through this system. Consider something like a zip tie. You can always put a slight kink on the end and then feed that through and hopefully try and catch the gap between the bearings. Equally, a piece of copper wire may do the same thing, but obviously be careful not to damage anything with that being metal. I would avoid disassembling anything if you can, but you could consider releasing the set screws on this piece here, taking that off, and it may just give you a little bit more room in order to pull the belt up through the gap in those bearings. You can make a little bit of a loop, fit that piece back on, tighten it up, and then simply pull the belt back down so it grips on the teeth. When it comes to fitting the first tension clamp back on, it's possibly easier to do it away from the frame. It doesn't need to be in situ in order to clamp it down. So you feed the belt through it, you can bend it around. Now depending on how much belt you've got, obviously you can leave a little bit overhanging. It does make life easier. But for this, I'm just gonna leave it where the clamp originally was. I'm gonna swing the plate back over the top and then try and put the little bolt back in place and just pinch it up. We're now going to fit this back in place. We'll start by attaching the bolt that goes, goes into the T-nut in the frame itself, as this is probably the most tricky. I'm also trying to do this one-handed, which makes it even harder. So I'll we'll align that up, and we'll just pinch that up slightly. We still want a bit of plane there, because we need to put the tension bolt in. There we are, that's got that grip. Now we're going to feed this in from the back, and attach that. Again, try and do this one-handed. It is a little bit fiddly. There we are, we just want that gripped. You want to make sure you've got a good couple of turns on it, otherwise if you've only got a slight bit of thread, it will pull it off when we apply tension. So do make sure you've got a good grip and a good few turns and maybe just a bit of thread sticking out there. We can then pull that back and make sure it's all secured in place and then clamp down this bolt just to make sure everything's tight. So I've actually just readjusted this and taken the bracket back another couple of millimetres, as you may see, by more thread sticking out. Now the reason for this is the Fox Alien machine runs right on the edge of how close the carriages come up to these brackets. So essentially, the further out you leave these brackets, you will leave a little bit of cutting room because the carriage may hit it. So it's a fine balance about leaving enough room to be able to apply tension, but not too much room that you're losing a lot of cutting space. I've got approximately five or six millimeters there, and that should be sufficient. So we're going to do a very similar thing at the opposite end now. We've taken the bracket off. I want to feed the belt through fold that over. We're not going to tighten this up too much. We just want it to be a loose fit at the moment. And I'll explain why shortly. So I'm just going to get that bolt in there just to hold it in place. And then we're going to fix that back to the frame itself. Now the reason we didn't clamp that too tight is because we know we need to take a little bit more belt and pull that through. So once we've got that in place and we want to bring this back up and just get a few threads on there, Again, just bringing it to the edge of the plate so it's got a decent grip. Now we know there's a bit of slack in the belt itself, so we're gonna try and pull a bit extra through on this clamp. So I've just released that off slightly. And now, as you can see, I'm pulling that over and I've just pulled through approximately about, I don't know, 10 millimeters. That, obviously, if you've got a different length belt, you will have a different length there. But I'm gonna fold that back over now and just pin that back down in place. Now, as I said at the start of the video, my tensioners were fully pulled back, so I had no more to gain off them. That's one of the reasons I'm pulling this extra bit of belt through here, is because I wanna make sure that we do have room left on the tensioners in order to apply tension to the belt. So I'm just gonna clamp this up now, make sure it is all fixed in place. Last thing we want is them giving way on the belt and losing all the work that we've just done. Now we can start to turn this bolt and apply tension to the belt itself. Now remember, we do have the option to apply tension at both ends of the belt. Obviously, as you pull this in, you will start to feel the resistance and gain some tension on that belt itself. So we've got a five mil here and we've got five millimeters at the back as well. We know there's some tension in the belt. So now it's time to take a look at actually testing the tension of the belt to get it to the correct setting. 
So when it comes to testing the tension of the belts, there are a few different methods we can take a look at. A simple one is just to poke the belt down in the middle of it and see how fast it springs back. The problem is with that is one, there's no real you know specific measurement to follow. You're just kind of poking it and seeing how it feels. But also it's quite a thin belt in a narrow channel of the extrusion, so there's not really much room to do that. So we'll put that to one side. Probably at the opposite end of the scale, you can also test the frequency of the belt. This is where you apply tension to the belt. You pluck it a bit like a guitar string, measure the frequency on a, a correct equipment or on a phone app, and then you can do some calculations to work out how much tension is in that belt. But to be honest, that's probably a little bit complex. So we'll go somewhere in the middle. And what we're gonna do is simply use a set of luggage scales or fishing scales if you have them. They just need to be able to measure up to a couple of kilograms or a couple of pounds worth of weight. Nothing fancy or complex. This is from the pound shop or the dollar store if you're viewing overseas. So get yourself a set of these and I'll show you how to test the tension on the belts. So what we've done is push the x-axis all the way back to make sure we've got a good length of belt in order to test the tension. I then measured that distance, marked on the frame halfway along so we can actually find the correct point to test the tension on. I've also built this little bit of a jig to help me demonstrate how to do the tension test for the purpose of this video. I should stress though, you don't necessarily need to do anything like this jig. You can simply just pull the scale up, but it just allows me to keep it a bit steadier in order to do the video. Now on the wood, you'll see a mark that is about 30 millimeters high, so just over an inch. What we're essentially going to do is raise this up so the hook applies tension to the belt and get the hook or the top of the belt to where this line sits. And that'll give us a measurement reading for the tension. Now what I should say is I have actually tested these scales and they are slightly off by about a pound and a half. So I'm aiming for about five pounds worth of tension, which on here is going to look about six and a half. Unfortunately, probably the downside to buying cheap scales and there's no way to reset the dial on this. But for the purpose of the video, it still demonstrates what we're trying to achieve. So I'm slowly gonna crank up the clamp just to apply the pressure and bring it up to where about the line is. There we are. Now we can see on the doll that's showing about five pounds worth of pressure or approximately two and a quarter kilograms worth of pressure. So what I'm going to do now is slowly turn the tension bolt to apply more tension to the belt. And we can just see that raising up slightly. And as I say, I know I'm aiming for about six and a half pounds worth of tension on that dial which will just be under five pounds of pr pressure. Now I should stress at this point, this is just my preference. I like my belt belts to be quite tight. Some people do do them a bit looser, but it is kind of personal preference. You need to experiment with your machine and see how you get on. Different machines will have different tensions. Obviously, first point of call is always asking your manufacturer for a recommended tension setting. So we're almost there. I'm just gonna tighten that up just a fraction more. And we now know that one is at the correct tension that I'm aiming for. We can slacken the clamp back off and that's this belt done. Final step once you've set the tension is just to tighten the bolt up that pulls it down to the frame. So we've set the tension and we're happy with where it is. Now I'm just gonna stress at this point, if you are changing the belt on a dual driven axis, such as the Y axis where you have a belt either side, make sure you change both belts together. It may seem obvious, but there is a very valid reason for this. If you put a new belt with an old belt, they'll be stretched at slightly different rates. Essentially, the new belt will have all the teeth were a little bit closer together. The old belt will be a little bit more stretched and therefore they'll be spaced slightly differently. What that ultimately results in is the possibility of the axis not quite running at the same rate on either side, and it may ruin a job. So definitely, wherever it's a dual driven axis, change both belts together. Now we've set the axis and we, sorry, we've set the tension and we're happy with it. There are two final things that we need to do. One is essentially kind of what I've just discussed and making sure the axis is moving the same on either side of the Y axis. The other one is just to readjust the uh, limit switches to make sure that they're not hitting the brackets that we've just tensioned. So let's get that done now. So let's take a look at those limit switches. Now for the purpose of this video, I've just taken the dust guard out here so we can see what's going on. But what I'm gonna do is slowly bring in the X axis and pull it towards this limit switch bracket. Now straight away what we can see is it's about to hit that little bit of overhanging belt before it touches the limit switch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is push that back a little bit and cut this little bit of a flap of a belt off just to make sure we've got the maximum room to work with. Be very careful when you are cutting these bits off. You don't want to go through to the belt underneath, obviously because that will damage it. 
So we've just taken that little bit of belt off. You can use a pair of snips or a Stanley blade, something like that. As I say, be very careful whichever method you choose. Now we're going to pull this x-axis back in slowly. And all being well, it should hit the limit switch before the wheel touches the tension bracket. Yeah, you can just hear that kicking in. So we've still got a few millimeters before the wheel hits the bracket, which is ideal. So we don't need to adjust that one. But do check the bracket at the other end as well. And you want to make sure you've got the same. As I say, you don't want the wheel hitting the bracket before the limit switch. So what we're going to do for the final test is we've got a set measurement for both sides of the axis here. We're going to set the x-axis back a designated amount and re-measure that distance. They should be exactly the same, but it is just a final check to make sure everything is okay with our belts. You may hear in the background the machine is already fired up. What I've used is a piece of wood to check the initial measurement on each side to make sure that it is consistent. And we'll now use the controller to send this back a couple of hundred millimetres and then we'll re-measure the distance. So what we're simply going to do now is check the measurement from this front bracket here to the plate there on both sides and they should obviously be the same. I'll be doing this with a steel rule for ease. So I'm just touching that plate and to the front plate it is 454.5 millimetres. We'll check it against that side. 454.5 as well perfect so we've installed the belt we've checked the tension and made sure everything is running accurately so hopefully that minimizes any issues coming from the belts themselves now do remember to check the tension on a regular basis include it as part of your maintenance schedule whether that's doing it every so many hours of running once a week once a month obviously whatever is your preference now that does wrap up today's episode as always any questions comment down below and i'll get back to everyone as quick as i can a big thank you to you all for watching a big thank you to my patron supporters and i'll see you all on the next episode